Good morning. What is going on, everyone? It's 5.30 in the morning right now, Thursday. And today's video is going to be what I eat in a typical day. People wondering, you know, what I eat to stay healthy, stay fit. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what I eat throughout the day so you guys can see how to balance your diet, all that good stuff. So welcome to the video. Let's get right into it. All right, guys. So first meal of the day is going to be breakfast. Um, I got a Jack's Jocks class that I'm teaching at 7 a.m. So before I head out the door for that, I'll get a little food in my system. Um, I typically don't like to eat a heavy breakfast or a bunch of food before I work out or teach a class to I just don't like that kind of full feeling in my stomach, you know. Um, so I usually have a light breakfast if I do eat anything before I go work out. So today's breakfast is going to be super simple. Got some berries that I had washed and prepped last night. I got Oiko's triple zero yogurt right here. 100 calories, no fat. Love this stuff. And got to have some cold brew coffee to start the day. So this will be breakfast, meal number one. And one thing I do miss, guys, is this time of the year, it's so dark in the morning. Like right now, I look like <laughs> I look like out of a out of a horror movie or something. Like just whenever I leave for my classes or when I go to the gym in the morning now, it's like pitch black and oh man, I miss the sun in the morning so much. <sighs> so man, we're here, at the Jack Shock Studios, getting ready for my first class. Uh, let me show you guys around the studio a little bit. This is just where we set up for the workout. As you can see, we have all the equipment laid out. We've got our little space all ready to go, lighting all set. And then we're going into what's going to be the main studio, which is still not ready yet. And show you guys here. We got Daniel and Taylor and Garrett. Awesome team there. And this is the real studio. That we're gonna be shooting out of live. It's so much bigger. It's gonna look amazing. Woo! All right, guys, we just got done with my Jack Shock class, and now we're going for breakfast number two. And wow, it's uh, it's bright out now. Walked in when it was pitch black, and now it is nice and bright. So let's go get breakfast. <laughs> So getting breakfast number two right now and there's this local spot that I always come to for acai bowls but they just started doing waffles so I uh, got their waffle sandwich last time and I've been hooked so I'm back here and I'm giving away free drink coffee with every purchase so win-win all right guys I got my acai waffle sandwich and it is way bigger than last time when I got it, and it looks amazing. If you can look at it, I got two waffle or like half of a waffle folded up with acai and peanut butter and honey on top. It looks so good. Oh yeah, guys, look at that. Acai, peanut butter, Mission too awful. I'm gonna kill this thing. Like the texture on these waffle guys are so perfect. Like just crispy enough, still soft in the middle. Not too sweet. I like this because the waffles aren't super sweet. This is dangerous, guys. Like, it's a good thing I don't live five minutes away from this place. I live about like half an hour. It's usually kind of like a treat. Like usually, I pass by this place when I go to Jack's Jocks. But other than that, 
I'm usually not coming here. And guys, one rule of thumb that I have for how to count your calories and track macros when you eat out is I would steer on the side of overestimating my calories than underestimating. Like they didn't have the amount of the calories posted on the menu for this waffle sandwich. However, just because I've been tracking for so long now, I probably can get a just guess what's in here because the peanut butter is pretty high in calories. Um, this waffle is probably high in calories, but it is only half a waffle. So if I were to guess with the peanut butter, the half a waffle, the acai and the light honey drizzle that I got, I would say this is about 450 to 500 calories. So I'm probably going to guesstimate this about to 550. But man, guys, this, this thing is so good. Now, I mean, I, I need to get it. I need to get a car wash. I haven't got a car wash in so long. Let's go get a car wash. Just got done getting my hair cut, much needed. Hair was getting kind of long, so. Now, guys, it's time for lunch. It's about like 11 o'clock now, kind of early, but that waffle sandwich, literally, I digested it in like 20 minutes. So guys, uh, Chipotle is not open yet, but I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes until they open. So this is one of my suggestions if you're trying to just stay on track, eat healthier when you're you know eating out but in general um don't use uh don't use having to eat out as an excuse to not be on not stay on track i know some when we have our meals prepped um it's easy to stay on track we already spent the time and energy and money to make that food so we just eat it and we stay on track but sometimes when we get behind and we decide to just kind of eat out that day we use it as an excuse as a little you know Oh, it's okay. I'm just eating out today. I'll just have to. Oh, I have no choice. I've got to eat a little bad today. But really, you can make a lot of healthy choices when you're eating out. And make sure you keep yourself in check. Make sure even if you're eating out, try to do your best to make the healthy choices. And save those kind of like cheat meals, those cheat times when you go out to eat for the weekends or a different time. But if you intended to stay on track and eat healthy that day, and it just so happened your schedule didn't allow you to do so as far as prepping food, then still make sure you're staying on track by the choices you make when you eat out, okay? The goods have been secured, guys. All right. I'll let you know what I got in my bowl when we get home, okay? Let's go. All right, guys, got our Chipotle here. Oh, give me a fork. This thing is heavy. So in the bowl, we got double rice, carne asada, spicy salsa, and guacamole. And that is it. It's like training system, but Sometimes whoever's scooping the stuff, they'd be really stingy about it. I'm like, come on, bro. You're going to give me a little more than that. But today, the girl that was working there, she hooked it up. Like, look at how much, look how much guac is on my Chipotle bowl. I mean, that might be a little too much, actually. But she put a big mound of steak on there, a bunch of guacamole. Um, I got double rice, like I said, because I'm going to go on a run later. So I need some extra carbs for the run. So gonna chow down on this, then get some more work stuff done. Got a podcast to record later, and that'll be it. But this is lunch right here, meal number three. Meal three, yeah, meal number three. Gonna be a good one. All right guys, so before I go on my run, I'm just gonna do a quick little rundown of what you'll need for a podcast. I'm recording an episode today. So I thought, why not just do a little rundown let you guys know what it, you need to start your own podcast. Um, so number one, you're gonna need a mic, obviously. 
Here you go, you need a mic. I got this one, it's the Blue Yeti USB microphone, $100. Um, seems a little expensive, but it's worth the investment if you wanna get that nice crisp audio. So I highly suggest you get a mic. This one just plugs right into the USB, so you just plug it right into the computer and you're all good to go, all set up. Number two, you need some headphones. Suggest some headphones just because you don't know what you really sound like if you just go off of your speakers or off the computer. Um, by having headphones, you will hear your voice exactly as if as you would hear it on the final product. So like this one I got off Amazon, it's called Audio Technica. Audio Technica, $60. Really, really awesome headphones, comfortable, sound really crispy. Um, just plug that right into the microphone and you can hear perfect sound. Last but not least, you will need a laptop or a computer or whatever, some kind of recording device. Um, on my laptop, I use GarageBand. So that is my recording device. Um, you could use your phone, but I don't suggest using your phone if you're trying to set up a long-term podcast. But if that's all you have, then that's what you gotta use. But I suggest not doing that and you go for a computer or something. There's plenty of other programs out there, not GarageBand. Um, so just gotta find which one works best for you, but that's basically all you need. You just need a recording device, you need a mic and some headphones. And then you can just start your own podcast and you're ready to go. And one more thing, guys. If you're trying to have a guest on your podcast, which I actually have a guest today, you I use this website called Zencaster. So Zencaster allows you to make a, like a, basically like a room and you join, your guest joins, and it'll record both people, both parties. So if you ever wanna have a guest on your podcast, Zencaster is a really good one to use and it is free. Oh, okay, win-win. <laughs> okay, let me hit record here and then we'll get started. Um, okay, we're live. Um, I have just been sitting down for the past almost two hours, just recording the podcast, doing work, and perfect opportunity now to just get up and get some activity in. So I'm gonna go on a run. Still gonna get some miles in today. It's so cold out, but I don't wanna run outside, but still marathon training, guys. So I gotta get some miles in today. So let's go. And it is starting to rain. That's just great. That's great. All right, guys, five mile run done. Five miles in the rain, 848 minute per mile pace. Just nice, easy paced run. Heart rate around like 145, 150. So, oh, good thing I came, I just finished though. Like it just started coming down a little harder. So, whew, good timing. Uh, so, got a little snack here before I eat dinner in about an hour. So this will hold me over until dinner. If you're a runner, you gotta make sure you fuel your body after your runs. So I'm eating this protein bar. I'm gonna drink a bunch of water. Um, but this one is the Cliff Builders Protein Bar. I don't eat protein bars a lot, and when I do, I want to eat one that tastes good. So this one that I, the ones out of the ones I've had recently, this one tastes the best. The texture is really good. The taste is on point. This one's the chocolate peanut butter flavor. 20 grams of protein, um, 290 calories, 11 grams of fat, 70 grams of sugar, which is pretty high. Um, so it's more sugar than I prefer, but like I said, I only eat this once in a while and when I eat a protein bar, I want one that tastes good and it doesn't taste like cardboard. Um, so yeah, I'll eat this, 290 calories, and then next meal will be dinner. All right guys, I'm prepping dinner now. Cooking up dinner right now. Let me show you what I got cooking. So on this side, I just got some chicken breast that I'm sauteing up. In this pot, I'm boiling some fingerling potatoes, which I'll roast off after they're done cooking. And then, for greens, I got a bag of kale that I'm going to saute in this skillet. Um, that will be dinner. Alright, and 
there is dinner guys got a big mound of chicken breasts on a bed of sauteed kale and some roasted fingerling potatoes to dig in this plate of food right here for dinner is going to be roughly 600 calories give or take but pretty close guesstimate 600 calories so it's still on track for hitting our calorie deficit so we're still under that limit so it's been an hour since i ate dinner and i'm already hungry again so i'm gonna eat the last meal of the day now we're gonna be eating super easy and simple pizzas let me show you what you need you are going to need marinara sauce i got the tomato basil one you need tortillas low moisture part skim mozzarella cheese and turkey pepperoni i've got about i'm at 2200 calories for the day so that means i have about 500 calories left to eat so two of these pizzas is going to be only a roughly about 400 calories maybe around there so i'll be below my calorie number and good for the day so let's make these pizzas and right, so the first thing you want to do is just spray your pan down with some non-stick spray and then next we're going to throw down the tortilla in there and just toast one side only first we're toasting one side only and let that go for just about a minute or so until it gets nice and crisp on the bottom this thing is pretty close now so i'm going to flip it over nice and crisp on the bottom and now we're going to throw our tomato sauce on top And then next, we're gonna top it with some cheese. Then we're gonna top it with our turkey pepperoni and then cover it up with the lid. Sorry, before you put the lid on actually, give it a little bit of water. Just so it steams this cheese and then you let it go. This will help melt the cheese inside. And that is it guys. Your pizza is ready. You can eat two of these for only 400 calories two pizzas so this is what i'm going to eat to finish up the rest of the day and that's it and like i said guys the great thing about these pizzas is that you use turkey pepperoni so it's only 80 80 or 70 calories for 16 pieces of pepperoni and then you got to use the low skin mozzarella cheese so i mean these two whole pizzas for 400 calories so perfect little cheat or hack for eating a little healthier kind of pizza and so i'll finish these up so these will bring my total calories for the day to 2590 so 2590 that's my total calories for the day um, thanks for watching this video guys i'm just going to finish this up uh, thanks for following along today and seeing what i eat hopefully you guys got some tips and hacks on how to eat a little healthier during in your lifestyle and uh yeah that's going to be the video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.